guys, it's me again. Um, this is a bit of a funny one, so I thought I'd share it with you. Um, this XR400 here, I serviced for a good customer of mine a couple of weeks ago. Um, and the one thing I couldn't do when I was servicing it was the spark plug was completely jammed in. So I've got my friend Ben here to bring his camera along because today um, I'm going to hopefully be able to repair it with a what's called a time cert, which is a thread insert. It may be that the spark plug is going to come out really easily. If it doesn't, I wanted Ben here with his camera because it could be a good repair to share with you guys. So my first thing I'm going to do, which is a top tip, is I'm going to use an airline. And if you come in here, Benji, with your camera, um, I'm going to take the spark plug cap off. And because it's a trail bike and it's covered in mud, there's going to be a lot of debris around the spark plug. So I'm going to use my airline in here and I'm going to get all the crap out. Right, what I've done, as you've just seen, is I've blown the dirt from around the spark plug. Um, obviously, we don't. if the spark plug comes out, we don't want any debris falling into the cylinder. Um, and what I use to see whether there's any dirt around the spark plug, and it's the same with, with most sports bikes, is you can't really see around the plug to see whether there's any bits of gravel or grit still there when you take the spark plug out. So I've got a little camera here, which is a little bullet camera. Um, and on the end here, it's got a... A little nodule, little camera on the end with an LED. Can you see the end of that, Benji? I can. Um, so what we do is I'll poke this down around the uh, spark plug and we can have a look and see whether there's any dirt in there or not. Uh, there's a bit of something there, but I think that's good to go. It actually looks to me from this angle like this spark plug actually isn't all the way in which would suggest that somebody's actually cross-threaded it at some point. So anyway, that's that. It's worth noting, actually, that these, um, these bore scopes are so incredibly cheap these days. My first bore scope cost about £1,000, and it was a little eyepiece with a solid rod with just some fibre optics in it. And now you can get a digital one like this for less than 200 quid. So it's a, perhaps a real good thing for you to buy and keep in your toolbox. Anyway, let's see if we can get this plug out now. Right, now for the potentially nightmare scenario bit. Um, engine's hot, I'm gonna see if I can get this spark plug out, which I think is cross-threaded, so we'll see what happens. This is the point where I swear Tight, very tight. It's that moved. Was, that was close to your hammering face. <laughs> this is my this is my stripped thread face. Oh, it's really tight. It's moving. I suppose at this point it doesn't matter if you put too much pressure on it. I mean, can you break well, something or? Well, the two things are going to happen. It's either going to come out, or it's going to snap off. Um, if it snaps off, I've got to take the cylinder head off. If I can get it out, then we can use the time cert repair kit to repair the thread, which is kind of why you're here, and I wanted you to film this, because it, it would make for a, a quite an interesting how-to video. I think it's going to come out, because it's probably gone one full turn now, and it's really, really tight. I think looking at that video, it's... Um, Somebody's cross-threaded it, and it hasn't, it hasn't actually gone, even gone all the way in. So what you're using there, you're not using a ratchet there, are you? No, I'm just using a, the, the, Honda, the genuine Honda plug spanner, because it's nice and narrow, and it'll fit down in the tunnel where the spark plug is, and just with a 10mm spanner on the end of it. Right, well, the good news is it hasn't snapped off uh, and it's come all the way out. The last three or four turns were, um, were fairly free, so I'm hoping it might be okay. Right, we can see, I think it's either been crossed or somebody's put the spark plug in without doing what I said, which was to get rid of all the dirt. 
and it's picked some dirt up and dragged it down through the thread. So I think the thread in the cylinder head is a bit knackered. Um, so the next thing is to have a look at the thread in the cylinder head with my little camera and we'll see what that looks like. Right, so now I'm going to have a look at the spark plug thread with my camera, see what sort of state it's in. Um, I've seen much worse, it does look a bit roamed. It's probably as well to just put a time cert in anyway, just so it's got a nice clean new thread and a new seat for the spark plug washer. So I'll show you what that's all about now. One thing I've forgotten to do, um, and this is another top tip, is we're obviously going to be re-tapping the, the thread for the spark plug. Obviously that involves aluminium swarf dropping down into the cylinder. So one thing you should do before you take the spark plug out is make sure the engine's on compression stroke. Now with a bike with a kickstart lever that's easy because we can put the plug back in just to, enough to uh, lock the hole up slightly so just get in a couple of threads and we can use the kickstart lever to turn the engine over and we instantly know when we've hit compression now what I would do is I just push it a little bit more basically it's hit compression so both valves are shut and the pistons on its way up um, and you turn it at, turn the engine a little bit more so it's sort of halfway up the compression stroke and what that means is both valves are shut, the piston's more than halfway up the bore, and then when we're um, re-tapping and doing whatever we do, if any debris drops down into the cylinder, which it will, we then put a plastic pipe in on the end of an airline, and we blow compressed air into the cylinder, and it blows all the debris back out of the spark plug hole. Obviously, if the valves are open, that wouldn't be possible, and then there's a danger of getting some of the debris and the swarf on the actual valve seat. So. If you're doing anything like this, make sure you're on compression stroke with both valves shut. Um, as I said a moment ago, it's easy with a kickstart lever because you can turn the engine over and literally feel the compression. If you've got a modern sports bike, obviously it hasn't got a kickstart lever. So what you'd need to do is most engines have a blanking plug on one side or the other with a, um, a 14 or a 17 mil socket you can put on the end of the crankshaft um, and it's got marks for top dead centre um, and you can turn the engine over and make sure you're in the right in the right place that way but if you look in the workshop manual usually it will show you how to get an engine at top dead centre with on the compression stroke or or what have you right so the next thing is to um, get the time cert kit out and show you what that's all about right okay now for the magic um, obviously to do this repair we've got a new spark plug because we don't want to put the old one back in and then this here box of tricks this is called a time cert kit and this has saved my life so many times, you wouldn't believe. Um, the kit consists of a few separate bits. We've got a driver tool. We've got a metal bar for turning the driver tool. Like that. You've got, now this is a clever bit, we've got a two-stage tap. So the first bit of the tap is the original spark plug thread size and then it tapers up to the thread size kit. <laughs> I'll go again, shall I? Or you can just keep going. Oh, we just keep going, eh? <laughs> I'm sure they won't mind. Um, so this tap is two stages. There's the first bit, which is spark plug thread, as I said, and then this second bit is the thread size for the insert. Um, and I'll show you this in action in a second so the process goes oh we've got another piece as well which i need to show you uh, this is the insert inserting tool right so the way it goes is we use this driver which fits on there nicely we go into the original spark plug thread and we keep cutting and cutting and cutting until we've cut the new thread for the for the insert wind it backwards and forwards a few times make sure it's a nice thread, take it out, and then I'm gonna put an air line down in the cylinder and I'm gonna blow all the swarf out. Um, then I'm gonna re-thread this back in, into the insert, so, sort of all the way in, so the in, this bit of the thread is in the cylinder head. And then there's another piece, 
which is called a seat cutting tool, which is quite clever. So what happens is that's inside the cylinder head, if you can imagine, with a tap sticking out. And then this drops over and drops down. And then we use the in this tool again, which uh, turns the driver, if I can get it on there. So like so. So then that's in the cylinder head. We turn the driver, which turns this seat cutting tool. And if you bring your camera over here closely, Benji, you can see here. This seat cutting tool does two things. If we can see, there's two cutting tips. There's one on the inside and one on the outside. This one on the inside cuts a countersink for this bit of the insert, so the insert can actually sort of disappear inside the head ever so slightly. And then this outside edge, this bit, that cuts a new gasket seat for the spark plug washer. So when the spark plug goes in, it's got a nice clean seat exactly at 90 degrees to the hole if you like so the spark plug can seal properly so that's it that's in essence it's very clever and the beauty of it is you can do it with sports bikes the spark plug tunnel can be you know six inches long buried down inside the cylinder head and normally it would be oh i've got to take the cylinder head off this is going to be a huge nightmare but with this tool because this driver's so long you can get down quite a long way and of course there's no danger of um, messing up the the thread because it's a, that twin stage tap you know it lines it up for you because it goes into the original spark plug thread so what does that mean for replacing your spark plug in the future do you have to have a different size no plug? exactly the idea is the if you come a bit closer with your camera the idea is this insert is you know once it's in the cylinder head um, it, the spark plug fits in a completely normal way and the last stage of the process once you've got your your, your thread tapped in the cylinder head and you've got uh, the seat cut, which I was just explaining. The last step is to put the insert in and use this tool. This is quite clever. The insert tool screws in inside the insert like that. This insert is actually not quite the right size. It's a little bit too small for the hole. So what happens is you use the driver. You screw the insert into the head and it goes in fairly loosely, if you like. Till it hits home and goes to a stop and then you use this driver again and you keep on winding this insert tool by the way you need to lube this so put a little bit of engine oil on it so it doesn't damage the insert and this this tool basically you probably won't be able to see it on the camera but it's not quite round it's got sort of slight flats on it so it's effectively got a cutting edge and it swells the insert in the aluminium of the cylinder head so it forces it into the into the head so it's you know it's an interference fit basically then so it's never ever going to come out so you keep winding this um, down through the insert and wind this backwards and forwards till it's nice and loose in the insert and then you've made the you've then made the thread for the spark plug as you'll see the spark plug as it goes in it gets tight on this last bit of thread because that's that's actually too um, the internal diameter of the insert is too small for the spark plug and that tool, the insert tool, forces it out into the cylinder head to hold it in place. Anyway, let's get on with the repair. We'll be here all day. Right, as you can see, the tap now, the first stage of the tap, which was the original size of the spark plug thread, has gone in. And now we're on to the second stage of the tap, and it's starting to cut the thread for the insert. Um, at this stage, obviously, don't worry about this swarf. As you can see, there's a lot of aluminium swarf there from it cutting. Don't worry too much about that dropping down into the cylinder because we can blow that out with an airline afterwards. Um, just go back to my top tip from earlier on. Make sure that the engine is at top dead, or not at top dead centre, but about halfway up the compression stroke with both valves shut. So then there's no danger of the aluminium swarf getting underneath uh, the valve seats when you blow it out. Right, so I'll carry on tapping. Right, I've got the tap now um, pretty much all the way through. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take the tap out and I'm going to blow the swarf out of the cylinder and give the thread a clean. Right, as you can see now the tap's out. Uh, there's quite a lot of swarf around the top and also down in the cylinder there as well. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get a little length of plastic pipe I'm going to poke it down inside the cylinder with the compressed air and I'm going to blow that uh, blow that swarf out. Now another top tip actually, um, 
A lot of people might suggest putting grease on the tap to collect the swarf. Now, in my opinion, that's quite a bad idea because what can happen is the, the swarf will stick to the grease and then it can drop down inside the cylinder and actually stick to the piston crown and then when you're trying to blow it out with the airline it won't come out. So what I suggest is just a little tiny squirt of WD-40 or GT-85 on the tap. So, I mean, that's how the taps come out of the cylinder. So it hasn't collected any swarf at all, it's left it all in there, which means the swarf's quite dry and it should come out okay with the airline. But if it had grease on, it could drop in and stick on the piston crown and that would obviously be a bad thing. Just um, as a layman, Go on. the first thing I'm thinking now is, can I, can't I just stick a magnet down there? It's aluminium. <coughs> oh, I it's see. not magnetic. That's, that's, that's why I get you to do it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Otherwise that would be a great idea, yes. Okay, right, let's clean the, clean the cylinder now. Right, as you can see now, I've got a piece of plastic pipe down inside the cylinder. Um, and I've got it connected to my airline, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to... As you can see, the, the swarf is exiting the cylinder. Right, so the idea is pipe in the cylinder, uh, a bit of compressed air, and you can see the bits of swarf jumping out. You basically keep going, wiggling the pipe around, so you don't get any more swarf. Right, that's the hole then, all nice and clean. Um, no more swarf inside the cylinder. So that's ready now. What the next step is I'm going to screw the tap back in and then recut the seat for the spark plug sealing washer and the top of the insert. Right, I've got the tap back in the hole, um, screwed all the way in, and it's slightly below the level of the thread, if you can see that. It's quite difficult probably from that picture. I'm going to use the shaft of the tap now as a guide for the seat cutter. Right, so that's the seat for the insert cut with this here tool, um, which I showed you earlier on. That slides down over the tap, um, and it's cut a little countersink for the top of the insert, and it's also cut a new seat for the spark plug washer. You can see that shiny bit. It's a bit of a rubbish picture, perhaps. So the next thing is to put the insert in. Right, okay, so there it is, the repair complete. The insert's all the way down. And if you look at the, the top edge of the insert, it's slightly recessed. So it's slightly below the gasket mating surface of the spark plug. So that's what that seat cutting tool did. It cut a little recess for the insert to sit in and then cut the um, the sealing surface for the spark plug washer. So what I did, how I did this was, if you pan up here Benji, um, the insert tool with the insert, a little bit of GT85 on here to help it go on. Um, the insert, when you screw it onto the tool, will only go sort of so far and then it gets tight. So what happens is when you wind that into the cylinder head, the insert goes all the way into the head and bottoms out on its little seat that you've cut for it and then you continue to wind this tool and this tool spreads the insert out into the cylinder head as I think I already explained and then you wind this tool backwards and forwards a few time, times make sure the thread's the right size for the for the spark plug take the tool out and job is done So now that we've is, got a brand new spark plug in there now can we? We can, there's a new spark plug here for it um, I'm going to put a little bit of copper grease on the thread, put the spark plug in, goes without saying, don't over tighten the spark plug, just nip it up, job's done. Um, remember the top tip of getting rid of the dirt from around the spark plug before you take the spark plug out, because that's I think how this got damaged in the first place, somebody had taken the plug out, a little bit of grit or dirt had dropped into the thread, they'd wound the new plug in, of course the cylinder head's aluminium, and it had ruined the cylinder head, or ruined the thread in the cylinder head, so Whenever you take the spark plugs in and out, a little bit of uh, air lineage around the plug, and you should be good to go. And where do you get the um, where do you get the cutting tools from? The TimeCert kit um, is actually made by a company called Worth. They're very expensive. That kit, which is a 12 mil kit with two sizes of inserts, is just shy of 200 pounds, something like that. So. 
quite expensive, but perhaps if you you know you think you're going to need them for other people as well, it might be worth buying them. Job done. See you next time.